Hi, my name is Liam Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the 26th of February. And uh, I hope that you all had a great trading week. And um, if you find the videos that I produce every weekend uh, useful, please uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your trading friends. So um, getting into uh, the week ahead and in the upcoming week, investors will be keeping a close eye on PCE price indexes and uh, the PCE price index is the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation. Uh, personal income and spending data alongside speeches by various Federal Reserve officials. Additionally, pivotal metrics such as the ISM manufacturing PMI, the second estimate of GDP growth rate, durable goods orders, CB consumer sentiment and new and pending home sales will be under scrutiny. Internationally, attention will be drawn to inflation rates in Japan and that's going to be an important um, measure because that will really kind of decide um, whether the Bank of Japan will uh, hike rates sooner or later as they are really the only bank that are looking to hike rates. Actually, um, New Zealand uh, have had uh, a bit of a change as well. New Zealand could potentially be hiking rates this year, but pretty much every other G10 um, uh, central bank is looking to cut rates this year. Um, moving on, sorry, uh, Australia and the euro area. GDP growth rates for Switzerland and Canada will also be in focus. Furthermore, uh, manufacturing PMIs for pivotal countries such as China, Switzerland and Canada will offer insights into the health of their respective industrial sectors. Lastly, markets will await the interest rate decision from New Zealand Central Bank and unemployment rates for Germany, Japan and the Euro area. So lots going on this week uh, that should and could uh, move uh, prices. So uh, before we get into the week's analysis, I'm starting off on uh, some trade analysis and my trade of the weekly Canadian dollar yen. And uh, this is the uh, the trade setup on the CAD yen. And um, it was really based on a daily uh, time frame stop hunt now the entry wasn't necessarily on the daily time frame uh but the level was really clear and i don't really talk about stop hunts on this channel uh, uh very often or if at all you know obviously i talk about supply and demand but um with, with stop hunts really it's about uh, understanding um that the institutions are buying beyond levels or selling beyond levels um that the typical retail trader wouldn't necessarily look to uh, buy or sell. And it's about um, understanding uh, liquidity hunts, etc. right? So they typically uh, tend to uh, show themselves um, in alignment with the fundamentals as well. So um, my bias on this really was because the Canadian dollar this week uh, didn't have uh, that uh, not great news i think it was um it was the inflation rate that was the inflation rate came down um below expected right and so with inflation coming down it potentially would have put um the bank of canada in a situation where they could potentially hike sooner sorry cut sooner rather than later and so um i thought that the um the uh, the Canadian dollar was kind of capped to the upside in terms of its appreciation. I didn't think it would move up too much further. Um, and also as well, next week, um, as we've just kind of covered, that there is inflation rate year on year is expected to come out for Japan. And if that does come in higher than forecast, then that should push um, uh, the Bank of Japan um, to want to hike sooner and so um, hopefully this is going to happen. Of course, nobody knows. I don't know what's going to happen with inflation. If it comes out, you know, uh, lower than expected or as expected, then, um, you know, I'll just come out of the trade if, if it prices go against me before it does. Um, but at the moment, I'm actually in profit in one position. I took three positions on here. And um, this was the actual setup that I posted in the private members uh, area on Tuesday. So I said the CAD looks like a nice daily stop hunt, everyone. And again, it was based on CAD 
um, inflation lower, CAD likely to weaken. So um, that was the uh, uh, the calendar <clears throat> and on the day that it happened. So this is what I had, I had uh, posted and also as well, um, there I did have um, another chart somewhere with regards to um, an, an intraday stop hunt, but again, that's more for the uh, the members. But from a from a daily stop hunt perspective, um, this was what I was looking at. And so, just zooming in a bit more, um, I had entered into three positions. So, just breaking this down a bit. So, my first entry was at one ten ninety eight. The second entry on a pullback was at the 111.30 and then the final entry was actually at the 111.58, um, so around there. <clears throat> so my initial market order was, was here and then um, as prices pull back, I get in uh, for a, 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 a better price, of course, a cheaper price and also as well, better risk reward, right? So. Um, you can see here on a 50% pullback, um, you know, I've got a better risk reward. You can see the, the, the risk versus the reward if I'm right about this trade. And also as well, if it came back to like the 95% uh, pullback, then um, I get an even better risk reward, right? There's my risk and the reward to the downside. Now, um, for those that have been following me for any length of time, what I typically do is take off at least a position if I can get to like a one-to-one. -one. Um, and so what happened on the Friday was that um, prices, Thursday triggered me into my final uh, position and then um, I managed to get a one-to-one. -one. My stop loss, by the way, was 25 pips above the, uh, the high and that's the same thing for all three positions. So um, I'm anticipating hopefully that the Japanese yen um, will be uh, will start to high crate sooner. They they become you know hawkish, and we we'll, sorry we'll talk about this a bit later as well in the um, in the uh, video. But this was my idea to try and get ahead of the news um, on a stop hunt, and typically stop hunts that happen uh, before uh, major news events are, are a, actually a really good sign that potentially the market could be obviously buying the yen. Um, and clearing everybody else out and drawing even traders going to go long, right? Breakout traders, etc. before actually rolling over. So let's see what happens here. So um, I've made profit on this uh, this uh, trade here, the final uh, uh, pending order sell. So that's in the bank. And now I have two um, trades open, which if prices go in my direction, I can swing trade, you know, down to uh, to, to various levels depending on um, obviously how uh, how hawkish the uh, Bank of Japan become. If they don't become hawkish and let's say, for example, you know, Monday night comes along and um, the data doesn't necessarily support uh, hiking uh, sooner, then I'll just, you know, get out of the trade and then look for another entry higher. Because as I said, I think that the, the Bank of Japan should really be the um, outside of uh, the New Zealand dollar should really be the only tr um, uh, currency in the central bank that are hiking rates. And so, um, yeah, that's really it. So uh, waiting for this trade to, 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 to become profitable, not profitable just yet, but hopefully it does. Um, but worst case scenario, I'll just lose, um, uh, you know, two positions, but made one. So it's a it's a small loss rather than a full stop out. So that's really the uh, the analysis and the trade breakdown uh, for this trade. And I'll keep you updated next week as to what happens. Or you can just keep monitoring this chart and then just know that if it goes higher, <clears throat> um, I would have taken either a full loss or a partial loss depending, or if it keeps going to the downside that you know that I'm swing trading this and uh, you can follow along anyways on your own charts. So, um, getting into the analysis for the week and looking at the uh, dollar index equally weighted dollar index and um, if you don't know what the, the equally weighted dollar index is um, it basically um, is another way of measuring dollar strength against uh, the euro the pound the yen the cad the australian dollar new zealand dollar and the swiss franc and what i'll do is i'll put a link in the top right hand side as well as uh, down in the description box below um, 
on, on really how to add this to your chart the calculation and why I use the uh, equally weighted dollar index rather than something like the uh, DXY or the USDX. Anyways, um, uh, my bias for the dollar is still uh, long, so we've come down into this demand zone. And um, one of the reasons why I am uh, continuing to, to remain long for now, of course, the data needs to support the narrative. If the data changes and the data that I'm looking for to change really is going to be inflation. Um, I think if inflation uh, comes in lower than, than forecasted, then the market will price in rate cuts sooner, which will um, uh, cause the dollar to, uh, to weaken. But for now, uh, it looks like bond traders uh, a brace for another US sell-off and unwind bullish bets. And um, uh, it's really important actually to keep an eye on what bond traders are doing because <clears throat> bonds, bond prices, bond yields and currencies um, are, are highly correlated. So um, not to get into it too much, but it, the basics of this is really understanding that bond prices right and bond yields move in um uh, inversely right so if bond prices go up yeah uh, this is the price goes up then bond yields should fall and vice versa right so if bond prices go down yields should go up and um and so what this article is really saying is that bond traders are bracing for the risk of a renewed sell-off. So they're talking about bond prices. So bond prices, yeah, uh, are bracing for the risk of a renewed sell-off, driving a surge of trading options targeting higher yields. So bond prices coming down, selling off, right? Trading options targeting higher yields, right? and promoting investors to unwind long treasury positions by the most in nearly two years. And again, this is driven really by the fact that, you know, positioning comes as the bond market was hit by a fresh round of losses this year um, in terms of, you know, price this year after sticky inflation and still strong growth drive, drove traders to dial back estimates for how deeply the Federal Reserve will lower interest rates this year. So um, also as well, understand that bond yields, yeah, bond yields and, um, and inflation, yeah, are closely linked as well. So yields, yeah, inflation, and as well as interest rates are typically correlated yeah so they all move in the, in, in that direction um up or or you know if if for example interest rates are being held then yields will typically you know stay at a certain uh, price as well now um so if you understand that yields are remaining you know, within a certain range and not selling off and probably, you know, going slightly higher, then it means that inflation is likely to remain sticky, which then means that interest rates are likely to remain higher for longer, right? And that's really the uh, the logic around that and the reason why bond traders, um, you know, are unwinding their bets in terms of, um, you know, the bond prices. So that is a a confluence and a combination um, of understanding how bonds and uh, interest rates and forex are really kind of interlinked and so um, that's a great confluence to have when understanding why you should or maybe you want to be a buyer or a seller because bond traders will put their money where their mouth is and they will you know um, unwind positions or add to positions uh, depending on what they think is going to be happening with interest rates and inflation. Also as well, um, economists lower recession forecast to 40% on US 
job growth expectations. So economy is seen expanding 2.1 this year, sorry, 2.1% this year in Bloomberg survey and forecast has marked down recession odds to 40%, the lowest since 2022. So there was a lot of talk about the US going into a recession and now that's being priced out as well. So that is typically positive for a currency. And so, although I'm not saying that price is going to go to the moon, right? The, the point is that nobody knows what's going to happen in the short term, but if these things continue to play out, any pullback should be looked at as buying opportunities, whether, you know, the dollar goes, you know, buy is, is along this week or maybe along next week or over the next few few days. But the, the more prices pull back is the more um, cheaper you can buy the dollar as long as the fundamentals are still supporting a dollar buy when prices, you know, go down. So, um or pull back. So for me, my bias is still to go long on uh, the dollar, but that could obviously change if inflation measures do come out lower than expected. And also as well, um, looking at the uh, the CME FedWatch tool, the um, the dollar at the moment in March, you have the probabilities of a rate a rate hold no change. For the next meeting is 96% in May, change it to May, um, no change is 73%. <clears throat> and so the next time, well, the market is pricing in a rate cut <clears throat> currently for June. So at the moment, no change is 33.1% and an ease by June is at 66.9%. And so if this changes, if, if, for example, inflation data comes out, um, uh, you know, over the next uh, month or so, and it points to inflation coming in lower, then you're going to see the no change, in fact, change uh, and come in lower. And then the ease, the probability of an ease will actually increase. So and then that will um, be reflected in dollar price in terms of you know, the dollar coming in lower. But as long as the probabilities remain that the uh, the dollar will hold rates for longer then any pullbacks really should be buying opportunities. Of course, this isn't financial advice. It's just, I could just tell you what um, my theory is and uh, how I'm trading uh, the markets and applying the fundamentals. So that's really uh, where it is. And if anyone's been following me for any length of time, especially from, you know, the beginning of the year, you'll notice and you go back through my videos that, is that I've been long on the dollar and look at what's happened over the past, uh, you know, two months. So, um, you know, the fundamentals do play out as long as the data does support uh, the fundamentals. So that's where I am. Uh, dollar, yen, and so the dollar, yen, um, the yen didn't necessarily have, a, you know, great data over the past uh, week or two. There was a surprise recession but the Bank of Japan still appears to be on track uh, uh, to high rates despite the recession shock. So I've got here, uh, Governor Ueda said the Bank of Japan will continue to carefully pass data to judge whether a gradual ec ec economic recovery will continue in a signal that the economy's surprise slide into recession hasn't derailed its plans to end the negative rate policy in coming months and so he says we will continue to carefully analyze economic data and information to gauge whether a gradual recovery continues in the economy and the virtual cycle between wages and inflation will strengthen Ueda said Friday in response to a question by a lawmaker and he says Japan slipped to a recession into a recession in the final quarter of last year, a government report showed Thursday that prompted some, marks, uh, some market participants to push back their bets on the timing to an end of a sub-zero rate. So sub-zero rates um, and a rate hike is coming. It just depends on the timing of these rates. And so um, the longer the yen and the Bank of Japan take to hike rates is the more you're gonna see a weakness in the yen, right? <clears throat> and so that's the reason why you're seeing um, the dollar increase in strength for one reason why is because obviously the dollar is doing better than expected but also as well the yen um, at the moment isn't doing uh, fantastic but the Bank of Japan could look past um, the uh, the recession and still look to high rates and so 
if they do, I think it would catch a lot of traders off guard. And this is the reason why uh, I am going short here because I'm anticipating that hopefully the, um, you know, there is a data that supports uh, a short uh, or, or a, a long yen, which would be a, uh, um, a short uh, CAD yen trade as the uh, yen is the quote currency, right? But just looking at this from a technical analysis perspective, if you are looking at buying the dollar against the yen, then you'd have to really wait for a pullback into a demand zone like around here or there, and then look for <clears throat> a move to the upside. But if you are looking for any short trades, I think now is a decent time or slightly higher um, and maybe even a stop hunt potentially above um, the 152s would be a decent uh, trade as well if you know how to trade stop hunts. Uh, moving, at, moving to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD, um, again, the Canadian dollar not necessarily doing great but, um, and it does look like the dollar and the, um, the US dollar and the Canadian dollar will be uh, cutting rates at the same time, which is uh, June is being priced in. And so again, not too interested in this currency at the moment, although um, the, the, the Canadian dollar uh, could start to actually uh, cut rates slightly sooner. There is a possibility of that, but I think the majority of analysts are thinking that both are going to uh, cut in June, but if you do want to be a buyer of the um, of the US dollar over the Canadian dollar, then wait for a pullback into that demand zone. If you're looking for a um, a buy of the Canadian dollar over the US dollar, let's say some data comes out that supports um, maybe a dollar selling, then really you're waiting for that area there and that supply zone to look for um, a sell trade. Uh, pound dollar, so pound dollar. Uh, the pound has actually been um, quite strong. A lot of traders have uh, were, were, were kind of short on it. And I was talking about this last week about the expectation, I guess, for the uh, the pound to kind of maybe sell off a little bit. But um, I said last week that the market seemed to be looking past the recession, and um, this. Uh, article here which says the pound bull stand their ground and phased by UK dip into recession um, basically kind of goes into it and uh, the main reason why is because it says here that they point to economic green shoots and an inflation rate double the Bank of England's target bolstering the case for interest rates to be held higher for longer. So against this backdrop, they argue sterling will reverse its current weakness. And the um, the, the pound um, is expected to recover quite quickly and, and the data is showing that. So it says here that the UK PMI surveys show uh, the economy growing with optimism at two and a, a two year high. And so Britain's private sector firms are at their most optimistic in two years after signs that the economy quickly bounced back from a recession at the start of 2024. So the market, it looks like, is looking past the recession as um, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a, a long and deep recession. Uh, the Bank of England governor said it looks to be shallow and quick. And so um, if it is and they basically return to growth, then the pound looks like a buy. And this is the reason why you're seeing actually the pound start to go higher, whereas traders will be stressed, you know, kind of scratching their heads and saying, oh, well, the UK is in a recession. Let's bet on a recession. And there's a lot of short trades. Guess what? Their liquidity and uh, their short trade liquidity will be going to be above the market and the market likes to take out a lot of liquidity. Now, against the dollar, um, I'm not necessarily saying that you should be a buyer of the pound against the dollar, not at all. But um, ultimately, I think the pound is a buy, but just not against the, uh, the the US dollar. But if you do want to be a buyer and a, and a trader of this pair, you do have some options. You do have uh, currently right now in this supply zone. I would probably prefer a trade somewhere up here if I was looking to trade this currency pair <clears throat> or wait for uh, prices to move down below um, the one, two, fives if I was looking for a buy trade on this currency pair and buying, um, sorry, <clears throat> let me say that again. If I'm looking to buy the pound, 
I'm looking for a move back down into the one, two, fives and below to look for long trades. If I'm looking to buy the dollar, then I'm looking for sell trades at supply, preferably around these areas here. So, um, but again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade as I think both uh, currencies are, um, are pretty even. But if anything, uh, the slight edge may actually be to the uh, the pound because they are looking to um, hike, uh, or sorry, cut rates a bit later than the uh, the Federal Reserve are. Pound yen, so pound yen again, um, the pound strengthening, the yen not strengthening just yet, probably waiting for some data to come out, the inflation data this week. And if it does come out, then you've definitely got a, uh, a short trade on your hands. But for now, um, it does look like the, uh, the British pound is shrugging off the recession and uh, looking uh, back the nearest high or reference point that you can look towards uh, looking for a sell would be 2015. But if I'm looking for this type of trade um, and looking for a short trade, I'd have to be convinced that there's at least some supply here and then wait for a pullback before going short. So that's really uh, the play if I was looking for any kind of short trades. But for long trades, it's literally just a pullback into uh, a demand zone before, especially that demand zone does look nice, nice technical area for looking at uh, some long trades. Um, but overall, I would put my money more on the, um, the yen over the medium uh, to long term. But in the short term, it's a bit tricky unless we do get some data that supports the Bank of Japan uh, hiking sooner. Uh, Euro dollar, so Euro dollar um, did kind of break through this uh, supply zone. Uh, part of the reason for that was that the um, uh, the Euro and the market is pricing out rate cuts in April. So uh, there was a bit of um, indecision in terms of the market uh, pricing in um, rate cuts and it was whether it was going to be April or June and it says here that ECB officials tried to buy more time for decision rate cuts and policy makers want more confidence inflation headed towards 2% and Lagarde highlights importance of first quarter wage bargaining so it does look like they are um, uh, looking to potentially wait um, a bit longer before uh, uh, cutting rates and so it says here the latest decision in wages gives hope that we are on track um, This uh, central banker said Yanis uh, Sturanas, I think that's how you pronounce his name uh, But we won't have enough information to decide on rate cuts before the end of the second quarter so June and so um, the longer it takes for them to cut rates is the uh, the, the the higher or the more the currency will appreciate. And so prices have come back up to the 108s around there, 108.80s. Uh, now, um, again, if you're looking for short trades on this, then that's really uh, what you're looking for short trades right now in terms of buying the dollar and selling the euro. I am actually still uh, have a short bias on the euro, but I think potentially in the short term, um, there might be a slightly bit more upside um, while the market prices out rate um, cuts in April um, and then potentially we could see further shorts. But um, I would imagine that the uh, euro dollar would enter into um, an auction or some people would call it a range. Most people do call it a range. And what I mean is that you're probably likely to see uh, the market or the prices enter into some sort of auction where you have that is the low, that is the high, and the market stays um, in between this area here. Yeah, it goes because um, you have two central banks looking to potentially cut rates in June. And so when you have two central banks that are cutting at the same time, yeah then what should happen is you should have an auction or a range in market when you have one central bank that is hiking, for example, or cutting rates, then that's when you have a trend when you have a bit more of a divergence. So if you have two central banks cutting, not necessarily hiking, but cutting or hiking at the same time, then this is the kind of price action that you will likely see, whether prices auction from here or auction from here, who knows, but this is what I would likely expect to happen 
with prices on the daily time frame chart so um i would still you know preference the the dollar so any pullbacks into um supply zones uh would be for me um sell opportunities although for me i'm waiting for a bit more downside potential so if prices start to move up to the 109 maybe above the 109s maybe even up to the 110s i think that's where i really want to be a uh, a seller of this currency pair uh, euro yen and i'm actually in this trade as well euro yen short around here um again based on the fact that the euro uh, well more more of the fact that the uh, the yen hopefully um do decide to hike sooner of course um and let's see what happens here so there is an opportunity to short here but if prices do go higher then um i would just you know try and enter into another trade in hopes that the um the bank of japan will look to hike because ultimately even if i lose you know a trade or two here if i'm right about this trade and the, the downside potential is going to be you know 5 10 15 to 1 type trade so i don't mind taking a couple of losses in order to uh, see my trade idea play out and so i'm in this now let's see what happens on monday uh, monday evening if it does then you know go my direction then brilliant if not then i'll just wait for uh, a, a move and also as well for those of you who know how to trade stop hunts there is um, a nice level up at the top here if you are looking to buy the euro over the um over the uh, yen then you really want to wait for at least some sort of uh, demand zone the nearest demand zone will be down here and you've got the confluence of a level of support and resistance within that level as well so that will be and look quite nice in terms of you know a buy if you if you think that the uh, euro strengthen against the yen looking at the euro pound and the euro pound i want to be a buyer really of the pound over against the euro um didn't manage to get an entry there wasn't um I was saying to the members in the, in the members area, I wanted to be short here, but uh, things just didn't line up exactly as I wanted it. But if prices do come up a bit higher, I think this area here is going to be a very nice uh, short trade uh, because I think that the pound, hopefully, and the Bank of England should hike rates later. Sorry, I keep saying hike rates, should cut rates later than the euro right and so if they do if that does turn out to be correct then really the uh, the pound should strengthen over the um uh, over the euro and so that's my bias but if you do want to be a buyer of the euro then you're looking for pullbacks into this demand zone before looking at going long so that's what you're looking for looking to buy at these low areas here but um, for now, I don't really want to be a buyer of the euro against the pound. Um, Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar, Australian dollar has had some strength. Um, they are one of the last central banks to look to um, to cut rates. And so um, that is supporting the Australian dollar. What is capping the Australian dollar is really China's um, economic uh, contraction. But um, I think overall, the Australian dollar is a buy. Again, not necessarily against the US dollar unless course there is some disappointing news uh, coming out of the US but ultimately whether you want to be a buyer or seller um, uh, just look for you know these supply zones so right now if you want to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar then you're looking for short trades here right and if you're looking for um, a bot to be a buyer of the Australian dollar then you're looking at uh, buying at demand so um, yeah those are your choices I'm not necessarily in, um, interested in this just yet but I do think that once the US dollar starts to cut rates, I think the Australian dollar will benefit. Um, one of the currencies that benefits the most. And then we also have gold. So gold uh, making um, some highs at the moment, even though the dollar is actually you know a bit strong, but then saying that the dollar did pull back this week. So you have you know the dollar coming down over the past you know three well about five, six, seven days. So going to gold, it makes sense that gold is going, you know, to the upside. But ultimately, if the um, if the uh, dollar continues to strengthen over the next uh, month or two, 
then you're likely to see something like this happen. If not, if there are some surprise uh, weakness, inflation are coming down, disinflation coming down, then gold should make its way higher. So uh, any pullbacks into a demand zone will be decent for a, uh, a long trade on gold. But keep an eye on the, um, the dollar index um, at levels and also as well, of course, the fundamentals. And so um, that's it for this week. I um, hope you enjoyed the analysis and, um, and I hope it was helpful. So I hope you have a great trading week. Take care, all the best.